Ahoy there, matey. Ah, the golden age of piracy has not ended. A stout-hearted captain still sails the high seas. After losing an arm and leg in service, I still terrorize the enemy, the devil, in mighty Christian battlings. I, Captain Hook, aim that all children have full share of God's blessings. Salvation through the blood of God's Son be yours, matey. Every Christian pirate should sail with the Christian flag at high mast. This signals to the enemy, the devil, not willing to give quarter and no mercy. Give God your vessel, matey. Scuttle those old duds and put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. Weigh anchor now, ye swabbies. Where be that fascinating treasure? Ah, the treasure be at the altar of salvation. Jesus Christ be the most blessed treasure to be found by wretched man. Avast there, chart your course heaven bound, and remember, matey, beware of Christian pirates. They be out to rescue you from the sea of sin.
kind of a story? I'd like to hear a story with a happy ending. Well... Once upon a time, there was a little boy who lived with his mother, father, brother, and sister. The mother and father were real good Christians who loved and honored God in everything they did. They always took the little boy to church with them and they prayed for him very, very much because they wanted him to be a Christian too when he grew up. He was a cute little boy, just like you are. Sometimes he was naughty though, but most of the time he was a pretty good little fellow. One day he looked at himself in the mirror and thought, I'm grown up now, I'm 15 years old. What I need is a motor scooter. Well, he bought that motor scooter, but in a short time he outgrew that scooter and decided what he needed was a nice big motorcycle. All the tough guys in town own motorcycles 
and he wanted to be just like them. This made his parents very sad because they were afraid he'd get into trouble or in an accident. Mommy, did he get the motorcycle? Yes, it was fire gold with all the extras. And now he thought, I can do anything and go anywhere I want to now. But his mother prayed for him. She prayed, oh God, our son does not walk with you anymore. Help him to love you and follow you, Lord, as he did when he was a small boy. This boy started getting into trouble. He was in trouble with the police, and one sin led to another sin. But his parents kept praying. One day, he got on his motorcycle, and just a few miles from his home, he had a terrible, terrible accident. A car hit him head on. He was thrown off into a field. The ambulance rushed him to the hospital with the red lights flashing and the sirens squealing. The doctors said he would not live through the night. His mother and father cried and prayed. The next morning, he was still alive. But now the doctors said the only way he can live is for us to take his crushed arm and leg off. Oh, this broke his parents' heart. But they said, Oh, doctor, do whatever you must do to save his life. How can this story have a happy ending? Just listen and you'll see. Many days later, he woke up. He didn't know where he was or that he'd even been in an accident. His mother told him exactly what had happened to him. And do you know what he did? Did he cry? No. Did he want to die? No. He immediately realized he'd almost died and he wasn't even a Christian. He knew he was going to need God's help for the future. So he called on the Lord right there in that hospital room. Well, after he got out of the hospital, he had to learn how to walk on a wooden leg. He had to learn how to do a lot of things in a new way. But after a while, he was ready to enter college. Did he study to be a lawyer? No. God asked him to be a preacher. A Christian pirate preacher. Mommy, this is the story of Daddy. Well, you said you wanted to hear a story with a happy ending. So, he became Captain Hook. And God gave him a fine crew to sail with him. You three little pirates. There's a verse in the Bible that makes you understand why this story has a happy ending. It's in the book of Psalms. It says, It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. That means that sometimes the troubles we have bring us closer to God. Well, anyway, they lived happily ever after. Grace, how sweet. 
Sharky, how you doing? I'm Mill doing, Fatso. How are you doing? My name is not Fatso, and please don't call me that anymore. Hey, are you still on that seafood diet? What seafood diet? And what is a seafood diet, anyhow? Well, you know, you eat all the food you see. <laughs> Roses are red, violets are blue. Your mother was pretty, but what happened to you? <laughs> Sharky, I don't, I don't really appreciate your poetry very well. You know, it's good to be a Christian. You know, we're here to tell people about Jesus and how wonderful it is to serve God. Sharky, why don't you just uh, tell them something about God and tell them how wonderful it is to serve the Lord. Well, Captain, I'm glad I'm a Christian, and it's good to serve the Lord, and I hope that all the boys and girls learn about Jesus. That's real good, Sharky. Thank you. You know, I'm glad to be in God's army. Hey, Captain, I'm going to go in the Army. You mean to tell me the Selective Service has got you? Let me tell you, Dad, they're not so selective. Oh, you mean they'll take just about everybody, huh? Yes, even my brother got a draft notice. Even your brother got a draft notice? Well, what's so different about that? I don't have a brother. <laughs> well, I guess that is a little different. Well, I think you'll enjoy Army life. You know, I've got an aunt that's a whack. Yeah, I got an uncle that's a little cuckoo himself. <laughs> I didn't mean that, Sharky. You know, Army life is real good, and I'm glad we have the Army, the Navy, the Marines, all the different branches of service. That's what keeps America the great and strong country that it always has been and always will be. Yeah, I think I'll enjoy Army life. I have an uncle in the Army. Is that right? Tell me about it. He's really brave. He saved an entire regiment of men. He saved an entire regiment of men? He must really be brave. What did he do? He shot the cook. <laughs> Sharky, now that's not very nice. No, he's got hash marks on his sleeve. Hash marks on his sleeve? Scrambled eggs on his hat. Scrambled eggs on his hat? Oh, he must be an officer, huh? No, a sloppy eater. <laughs> hey, Captain, will you tell me a story? What kind of a story, Sharky? Oh, you know that one that's in the Bible about those three men? Three men. Let's see, which, which one could you be talking about? You know, that one about the three Hebrew children. Oh, yes. You mean Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Yeah, that's it. Shadrach, Meshach, and a while ago. No, Sharky, you're mistaken. It's Abednego. That's what I said, a while ago. No, it's Abednego. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The story's in the Bible about these three Hebrew children. Now, the story goes that... The king had built a huge, huge golden statue, and he made a proclamation to all the land that whenever the music was to be played, everyone must bow down and worship this golden image. It was just a statue. Well, Captain, anybody knows that you can't pray to a golden image that it can't hear your prayer. That's right, Sharky. But this king had made this enormously big golden statue. So the three Hebrew children, they made up their minds that they weren't going to bow down to that old golden image. They believed in the real, true, living God, the same God that we believe in, Sharky. Anyhow, 
They'd made up their minds that they weren't going to bow down to that image. So one day the music began to play and everyone bowed down to that golden image except you know who. Yeah, that's right. Chad read me Shaq in a while ago. It's not a while ago. It's a bendigo. That's right. None of them bowed down, but there was a man that saw them. What did he do, Captain? Well, this man went right straight to the king, and he said, King, those three Hebrew children didn't bow down and worship the idol like you told them they were supposed to. What happened then? Well, the king called for those three Hebrew children to be brought before him. The king had also said that if anybody disobeyed him, that they would be thrown in a fiery furnace. A fiery furnace? That's right, Sharky, a fiery furnace. The fire was so hot that when they opened the door, it even killed the soldiers that was leading them up to the furnace. Oh, you're kidding. No, I'm not. But you know, those three Hebrew children, not a hair on their head was singed. Is that right? That's right. But as they were standing in there, the king couldn't believe it when he heard it. The king came rushing right down to that furnace. He looked in. And do you know what he seen when he looked inside that furnace? What did he see, Captain? Well, he not only seen Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, but he seen a fourth person standing in there. Sharky, who do you suppose that fourth person was standing in the fire? Smokey the Bear? No, it wasn't Smokey the Bear. It was the angel of God that God had sent to protect them. And so the king seen that, it, that they had been protected by their God, and he called them out and he said, Fellas, from now on we're going to pray to the real, true, living God. And Sharky, from that day on, they begin to pray to the real God. You know, Sharky, it has a good ending. Yeah, I like good endings. And it always has a good ending if you'll do what God wants you to do, and God will always stand up for you and protect you if you'll stand up for Him. Sharky, I'm so glad that I've learned about God, and I want others to know about Him. Sharky, say goodbye to everybody. Well, I'd like to say goodbye to all the dads, all the mothers, all the boys, and all you cute little girls. Bye! Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious and troubled with cares about your life as to what you will have to eat or about your body as to what you will have to wear. For life is more than food and the body more than clothes. Now they were also bringing even babies to him that he might touch them. And when the disciples noticed it, they reproved them. But Jesus called the parents to him, saying, Allow the little children to come to me, and do not hinder them, for to such as these belongs the kingdom of God. Truly, I say unto you, 
Whoever does not accept and receive and welcome the kingdom of God as a little child does shall not in any way enter it at all. Pay attention and always be on your guard looking out for one another. If your brother sins, solemnly tell him so. And if he repents, forgive him. And even if he sins against you seven times in a day and turns to you seven times and says, I repent, you must forgive him. And he said, what is impossible with men is possible with God. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. I assure you, if anyone steadfastly believes in me, he himself will be able to do the things that I do. And he will do even greater things than these, because I go to the Father. I myself will grant you whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Yes, I will grant, will do for you whatever you shall ask in my name. If you really love me, you will obey my commands. Peace I leave with you. My own peace I now give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Stop allowing yourselves to be disturbed and fearful. You heard me tell you I am going away and I am coming back to you. Honor your mother and your father and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Live in me, and I will live in you.